Time now for Commodity and Cheap, where we talk to one executive in the commodity world. And today is Peter Domenical, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution Director. How to reduce CO2 emissions. It is one of the biggest questions facing the human race. Here are some of the ways. You can change what kind of energy that you use. You can capture carbon as it's released, or you can suck air or carbon out of the air. It's hard, but it's going to help a lot. So one way to do it is through the ocean. Now, the ocean naturally takes carbon out of the air in two ways. One, big crashing waves can dissolve CO2 from the atmosphere, mostly in cold water at the poles. The second is gas dissolves on the surface, wends its way down to the ocean floor. Here's how that works. Once CO2 dissolves on the surface, it's then eaten by these tiny organisms called photoplankton. When they die or are eaten by larger fish, that carbon sinks even deeper into the ocean where it's eventually buried in the seafloor and forms a rock like limestone and shale where it can be stored for hundreds of thousands of years. Some call that marine snow. Here are some of the pros. If this process can be replicated and increased, the ocean could be a key tool in decarbonizing the world. Here are the cons. It's really hard to measure how much carbon is actually absorbed. And if technology and businesses move too fast, there could be a lot of unintended consequences and harm done to the ocean. Plus, it's pricey. Two billion dollars in federal funding over the next 10 years will be needed for R&D alone. Enter WHOI, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, an independent nonprofit organization dedicated to ocean research and exploration. It's scaling up an experiment designed to measure a large section of ocean, an area about two times the size of Texas, with a network of crisscrossing sensors and robots to get a four dimensional view and understand how this natural process works before man made technology gets involved. I recently sat down with Peter DeMonacal to find out how much the ocean really does. The carbon in the, in the very depths of the ocean uh, is measured in billions of tons uh, per year. So actually the biologic productivity of the ocean that exists today, the natural function of the ocean, takes up about as much carbon as we emit from all global transportation worldwide. Wow. So uh, the globe would be a lot warmer if we didn't have this ability? That's right. Actually, if, if the ocean were dead, that is, if you could flip a switch and say no biologic activity in the ocean, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere would probably double. Does that change as oceans themselves get warmer? So this is the concern, right, is that we don't have eyes on the ocean. When we actually look into the very depths of the ocean below the surface, going down to an average depth of about five kilometers, uh, we don't know uh, how the ocean is changing. The oceans have tremendous capacity to take up carbon dioxide from the, from the atmosphere. And in fact, this is the concern, is that we really need to understand how the oceans take up that carbon and then might be able to actually uh, sequester it at depth over time. Do you have more uh, theories or ideas of how that could be scalable and like a real business model, for example, where a company can come in and say, great, I'm going to take your data and here's what I'm going to be able to do to be able to pull more carbon out of the atmosphere and put it into rock in the ocean? So this is what we're most interested in at, at the Woods Hole Oceanographic is to make sure that the science gets ahead of that very action. Absolutely essential that we first build the scientific, the technological capability to do this monitoring, because if these solutions driven by what I see will be really large economic drivers. If they get ahead of the science and this turns into a gold rush, a wild west for the oceans, it's that's the worst possible outcome. What kind of questions in terms of like fisheries, uh, low oxygen areas, um, all the other unintended consequences? Like when you guys are spitballing ideas, what comes up? So the thing that we're most concerned about is that uh, that the, that industry or that solutions will will be presented to the oceans and we're not going to have our eyes on the ocean. So, for example, the, the quality of the primary productivity in the ocean, the density of the fisheries, um, deep ocean oxygen levels. If, for example, if you have too much biologic productivity, uh, that can actually lead to harmful algal blooms. So there's a lot that can go wrong and uh, developing that uh, set of observations, that, that capability to monitor the system. It's very much like monitoring the health of a patient. So how long until you have concrete results? To really get something at the scale at which we're talking about, I think we can get initial results to within a, a couple of years. And then actually deploying this, the idea is to actually monitor this over time so that as the oceans are changing, we're keeping our finger on the pulse of the oceans. Do we have an idea of what the economic value of all of this could be? If someone were to come up with a way to durably, securely, and verifiably store a ton of carbon somewhere 
um, for uh, in excess of a century to a millennium to thousands of years, uh, they would have a line of people out the door uh, waiting to do business with them. And so if you just do the math, we're talking hundreds of billions of dollars and actually even trillions of dollars. Just to put this to scale, the current carbon trading market is $320 billion, and that went up 20% in just one year alone last year. That was my interview with Peter DeMonaco, Woods Hole Oceanographic President. All right, time now for our commodity kicker. No one is bringing home the bacon in the UK. Staffing shortages in slaughterhouses are leaving pig farms crammed with 95,000 extra animals. That's a lot of oinks. The problem is where to pump them so they won't hog up too much space. Farmers are getting creative in actually housing the pigs in cattle barns and potato sheds. And the industry has a lot to swine about. Shortages of CO2, one of the most humane and common methods of slaughtering pigs, could result in an overabundance of piggies, but porkless grocery store shelves. That does it for Bloomberg Commodities Edge. Catches every Thursday, 1 p.m. New York time, 6 p.m. in London. This is Bloomberg.